Hello, hello, and welcome to season two of Human Design Coffee Talk. Welcome, welcome. Teresa will be joining me soon, and it will be just her and I today. Hello, Robin. Hello, everybody. Let's see here. Wow, lots of people hopping on right away. Just waiting for Teresa. Here we go. Hello, hello. Hey, hey, hey. Can you hear me okay? I can. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. So this for everybody scratchy. who's joining us, we are wearing our headphones because we have been uploading these to um, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and we want the audio to be a little bit more clear. So if you don't know, now you know um, that we're gradually uploading season one videos to Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Yes, it has been a labor of love. <laughs> Literally, like, you love it. <laughs> I love it. I do. I have a response for it. I don't know why it's perfect that Brandy and I are teammates because she does all the things I don't want to do, and I do uh -huh. the things she doesn't want to do. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. honor each other's responses. It's literally like that, and also that power of that 2644. It's like literally we don't even have to, like, get out of our lane like we can stay in our lane and feel good about it so staying in the lane yeah yeah it feels so good to be back we needed some time off because life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but we're super excited to be back with you guys yeah we are super excited and we have an amazing lineup of guests for this season um yeah <laughs> like real good <laughs> real good do we want to announce our next guest our first guest yeah I, I think so people are kind of filtering in so <laughs> um our first guest will be next week and it's martin grassinger whoop, whoop. so he, he will be joining us on instagram um I'm really stoked about that his knowledge and the body and health and all of that and Teresa and I share the same passion and we are just like yes <laughs> so I figured out <laughs> I found out he had an Instagram so I was like well if he has one we can we can we can do this we can see if he wants to do it and he was a yes Yay! so yeah I'm so excited I was just binging some of his stuff so you know, I feel like I'll be able to kind of understand what he's talking about. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've binged his stuff too. And then all of a sudden I'm like, I don't know anything, but that's just receptivity. You yeah. Know? We'll, we'll know what we need to know. Receptivity at its finest. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So for those of you who don't know who Martin Grassinger is, he is one of like the OG analysts. And I believe he helped Raw develop the PHS system. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Um, so he has studied, you know, homeopathy and the body and health and wellness and has a really unique perspective on that. And he also does like analyst trainings and that kind of thing. So he's very OG. Yeah. And he's been speaking a lot about um, self-reflected consciousness. Uh, Human Design Collective has two episodes with him. So um, if you want a little, if you want to get a little taste. Yeah. Hop on over there. So yeah, it'll be somebody had given it to us to respond to. Um, Anita had said, uh -huh, uh -huh. I would love to see three generators, like with, you know, him and two generators talk because she had heard him on the collective with John and Amy, who are amazing. But yeah, it's a different vibe with generators and projectors. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. should be cool. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, when I asked him, he was like, Yeah, I was, I, I did one Instagram live with the Russians and I was like, perfect. So you know how to do it. <laughs> Great. <laughs> didn't you say you caught that live or? No, I didn't catch that live. Oh, somebody, somebody told me they, they caught it. That's funny. Maybe it was Anita. <clears throat> Probably. Right, everybody. Okay. So 
standard coffee talk. So there is a Q&A box. So if you have a question um, that you want to ask, um, sometimes comments get a little screwy and like we can't scroll back up. So if you have a question, there's a little question box and you can put your uh, question in there. And then when we want to respond to it, we can open it right up and it puts your question across the screen. Yep, yep. So... so. Oh, Sammy. My brain was like, HTC. <laughs> Humans like, collect it. We're HTCT. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All the things. And um, if this is your first time joining us, we're really open to audience participation in the comments. Um, anything that you feel like adding to the conversation, like I said, you can do that in the Q&A box. And we're here for it. Yeah. So what are we talking about today, Teresa? So I had a, you know, just in response, it seems like lately there's something in the air about mm -hmm. cults and con mm -hmm. artists mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. <laughs> like there's all these shows coming out about cults and con artists and everybody's sharing the a little bit culty podcast and some of mm -hmm. the spiritual cults that exist. And I thought it would be interesting for us to chat about you know, how Brandy and I have both been involved in culty things in the past and <laughs> even how human design can easily become a cult if you are not really tuned into yourself and you're getting sucked into all of the tribalness that can be found mm -hmm. in community um, and letting yourself be persuaded by outside conditioning in that way. So I just thought it'd be really mm -hmm. interesting to just kind of share our personal experiences mm -hmm. with all that, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if anybody on here has listened to the recent, uh, a little bit culty <laughs> podcast, <laughs> that's kind of a part of a cult I was. That's, <laughs> I mean, that's the cult I was kind of a part of. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, you were or you weren't? There, kind were. Of. I, said, I said it publicly. <laughs> oh, man. Um, Really great podcast, by the way, in general. Um, the Little Bit Culty podcast um, hosts were in Nexium, and then they started this. They There's also a TV show I think they were part of called The Vow, talking about cults, and their podcast has people on, and it's awesome. Um, mm -hmm. So I highly recommend checking that out. But um, also talking about our um, with this outer authority and this conditioning that we get and um, like our journey with spirituality, because it's easy to get kind of get sucked into that type of stuff mm -hmm. because we're looking, you know, we're looking for meaning and generators. We're looking to know ourselves better. And these things like kind of promise that. Right. And then we have projectors who grew up as generators who think that they need to know themselves. And <laughs> it's just a, a recipe for, it's very easy to get sucked into things, um, especially with, you know, when you're, oh, there's so many layers. I'm just like thinking of charts in my head of like places where this will pop up and it's kind of everywhere. So seductive. I mean, I think for both of us, at least when I, I so I've been listening to the A Little Bit Culty podcast and they, they like to talk about patterns that these mm -hmm. gurus mm -hmm. or cult leaders have and how they suck you in and there was this really good quote that was like nobody joins a cult everybody joins something that they think is a good thing right mm -hmm. and if you've ever been in a situation where you've been a part of something that's a little bit culty you you were doing it out of maybe idealism or maybe out of looking for purpose maybe wanting to be accepted and you weren't doing it because you wanted to be in a cult mm -hmm. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um there is no it's it's naivety you know Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I feel like for us, at least, well, just because we both have this channel, I can really feel my channel of struggle with this because it's mm -hmm. this feeling of looking for purpose. And, you know, when you're still kind of running through your open centers and you're not aware of the not self, um, like for me, it was all about like proving I could find purpose or mm -hmm. proving I had all the answers you know it's like we go to both of my open centers and we can see how my openness hijacked my definition really easily so mm -hmm. I don't know if you have anything about that Brandy 
Um, well, Sammy says we should start our own cult. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I think we should. And it can and be then... the cult where you can leave whenever you want and we're not trying to take your money and <laughs> you can do whatever you want. <laughs> Sammy also says, I wonder if there is just one person who joined a cult because they really wanted to be in a cult. I'm not sure there <laughs> is. Probably. <laughs> Probably, <laughs> probably um, be bento box. <laughs> yeah, as they were uh, calling him. Um, Courtney says love bombing. This is something that uh, I've heard cults do, and definitely seen this in the current coaching climate. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yep. Yeah. Oh, wanted community says yeah, that was me too. But it's funny mm -hmm. because you know I only have one tribal channel, and it's the six fifty nine, and it's either open or closed and I can't force it. Right. I have no choice. And so it's kind of funny that I put such an emphasis on community. Um, I do have hanging 37 and pretty much everybody that I'm close with in my immediate surroundings has 3740. So I feel like there's a lot of pressure on that for myself of like contribute to the community. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, and I think when you have a lot of individual circuitry, like I do, it's like, the community is just going to invite you in. It's going to just mm -hmm. kind of bring you in and accept you for your individuality. And before I felt like I always had to be somebody else in order to be accepted by the tribe or the community. But it's funny because when I think back and reflect on it, I always had these thoughts of, what am I doing? Like, this feels cringy. This feels weird. Mm -hmm. And I would mm -hmm. just kind of force myself to go along with it and much less than most people that I was seeing, you know, um, it's kind of like that feeling when you're watching, I don't mean to throw them under the bus, but when you're watching like hardcore Christians and they're like, ah, nah, nah, you know, and they're all just doing that thing. And you're like, are they actually, are they really serious? <laughs> or when they like act like their body is all convulsing and they're having this experience with God. And I'm like, are they just acting? I don't know. I've kind of felt the same in some spiritual communities where people are really putting on a show, mm -hmm. you know, and it, they could mm -hmm. be having a totally legitimate experience. But for me, when I was ever watching those things in person, I'd be like, is this, a, is this a show? I don't know. Are they serious? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I get that. I get that. And on the other hand, the you know, flip side of that, I'm more tribal. Mm -hmm. So that like pumps through me. Like I want to see people together. I want to see people supporting each other. I want to be part of supporting people. And oftentimes that falls into those categories. And it's really easy to be like, oh, this is where we can all support each other. And you kind of override um, you, like discernment just goes out the fucking window. <laughs> when my tri <laughs> when, like tribal prior to me, understanding um, human design and experimenting with my design. I can see where I would really just like latch on to anything where I could feel that because growing up, I had such a, I was, had to be like on my own. It was like just me on my own. And I, and I always felt this, like, I don't want to be on my own. I don't want to be so independent. People were always like, Brandy is so independent and she can do this. And I'm like, Inside, I'm dying because mm. I want a tribe. I love that. Um, and I, I, I got tired of just being called independent. All the, you know, it just gets, it gets old. And so when I kind of came into spirituality, I kind of entered in the way of how a lot of people enter. Um, like Louise Hay. I fucking love Louise Hay. Um, just because of the example of, of the person that she was, as mm -hmm. far as like her connection with the body and energy and things like that. Um, no affirmations don't make everything go away, but her frequency always just felt really good to me. And so that was kind of like my gateway drug into everything. So I probably wouldn't even, who knows if I would know about human design if I hadn't even experimented with with some of Louise Hayes teachings. And then that kind of leads you to like, you know, Abraham Hicks, and then you're going to go in here and here and here and here and here. And then you're getting to some really like enlightened teachings of like ancient teachings. And then you have people like Bento Box who have, um, <laughs> 
who have channeled surrender <laughs> and really, really get you <laughs> really fucking good at transmitting teachings. <laughs> Those channel of surrender people I can really get you. <laughs> really good at transmitting other teachings and kind of distorting them. Um, and if the chart I was looking at is correct, totally not in the correct motivation. <laughs> um, and you just, you know, you see somebody who's saying like, Oh, we can all do this together. And if we just do this all together and you fall, you, you bypass your own authority. Like I, you know, and you're listening to what somebody else is saying. And my tribal circuitry is like, we can do this all together. And it was so that it was just all that. And my husband would even be like, you know, what he says is like, some of the teachings are good, but that guy gives me the weirdest vibes. Like, I don't like it. And I'd be like, but <laughs> the projector coming in, <laughs> seeing through it, you know? And so when you, <clears throat> for me, feeling that like sense of belonging and my oddities and my frequency was received well, um, and the way that I, that I saw the world, it was like, somebody else was like, yeah. And I was like, Hey, you feel this belonging. Um, and yeah, I have 34 10, so I'm following my own convictions and I'm just, and then I was acting like ego manifester. So I was just like doing what I want and the tribal, I mean, it was just a, a recipe for very easily could have gone deeper into that cult. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah for, for those who are asking, um, his name is, how do you say his name? Benito? <laughs> Benitio? <laughs> it's Bentinho Mazzaro. Bentinho. <laughs> but we, we were calling him Bento Box because that's what they kept calling him on the podcast. And we thought that was yeah. funny. Um, yeah. That, there's a podcast about it that you can go listen to. But um, I, I had some like follow-up questions for you. So... I think Jen Zard has been posting about this a lot, but the defined ego feeling like, like other people think that you have, that you don't need anything because yeah. of your ego definition. Cause they can feel that power in you. And they're like, yeah. Oh, they're independent. They don't need any, yep. anybody. But in yeah. fact, it's such a tribal center. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then I was going to ask, were you in a vulnerable space when you felt seduced into that spiritual <sighs> community? And when you were looking for that, like what was going on in your personal life? If okay, you so share. yeah, um, let, me, let me count back the years. Okay, so I had been meditating, uh, Vedic meditator. I began, I became a Vedic meditator or along the lines of Vedic meditation um, eight and a half years ago, almost nine years ago, I think. Weston was two and a half or two. I can't remember. Anyways, um, and then my meditation teacher actually was like, hey, let's do this guided meditation, this guy on YouTube, you know, and I was like, great. And I really like clicked with the frequency. I was like, oh, that made me feel really good. You know, I'm feeling cognition. I'm like, oh, this is amazing. And so then I just started to kind of look up on my own, you know, I was like, oh, listening to these teachings. And the way that they were translated was way more easier for me to understand than the original, I mean, like, ancient, ancient, ancient teachings, a lot of Buddhist teachings, a lot of things that were that you read the book and you're like, oh, that doesn't click. Kind of like people get with human design and source material, you know? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, where, that channel in the works is like yeah. Sam Zagar, amazing yeah. at transmitting source material. So I would imagine yeah. it was similar for you because the stuff can be so complicated. And then when somebody Absolutely. comes along with 2644, boom, boom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With a not necessarily good intention. And I liked law of one. Um, so law of one, it's about service to self and service to others, which Bentinho has completely distorted that <laughs> for me now, as far mm -hmm. as, um, who is service to self and who is service to others. I still love law of one. The, something about the frequency of that just hits for me. Um, but I won't stray from that anymore. I mean, I won't like listen to any like other transmissions of that. Um, and so meditating and then just looking up his stuff. And then there was one time where he had a retreat 
in St. Thomas. And I was like, I need to go to that. And so I told my husband, I was like, let's go to that. I want to go to that. And he was like, eh. and I was like, it's 10 days in St. Thomas. Like, why not? It's, it was like a seven day retreat. And so we spent 10 days there. So we went there. And when I got there, it was like being in aura, right? I could really feel the difference. And I was like, I don't know if this is, <laughs> this is for me. It felt different. The words were still the same coming into my brain from him, but the feeling was off. It was really off. And I was like, well, we paid for it. We'll just hang out. And then we kept leaving and coming back and leaving and coming back. Turns out now that's my favorite place to vacation. So I'm not mad about that. I went to a new place, had a new experience. But while I was there, I was like, this is a little, you know, and then <clears throat> there was one time where we were scuba, we all went scuba diving on a boat. Um, I went scuba diving on a boat with Ventinio and it was like, I felt pressured to scuba dive. And I didn't, and, and my authority, which I didn't know at that time was like, no, do not do that. Just snorkel, do not scuba dive. And I had kind of like a little sinus pressure, not sinus infection, but just like allergies or something. I had sinus pressure and I was like, you know, I feel like I shouldn't scuba dive. And he was like, saying words like you are the creator of your own life and you're creating this moment you're creating <laughs> you're not going down there and I was like I'm not gonna do it <laughs> like I'm just not gonna do it so it was just a weird weird everything anyways fast forward met some really great people there though that I still am in communication with at one point um I, I can't remember what I was talking about I think, so we were at like dinner, at an outside dinner, and then I was talking with Bentinho, and he picked up on something like that I like had for him, like some energy. I was like, oh, I, yeah, I'm really good at this and this. And he was like, oh, you know, and I was like, oh, <laughs> I could feel that he's like, get in contact with this and let's connect and da, da, da. And I was like, you know, my ego self was like, oh, this is exciting. And then, but inside I was like, no, 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 no. So we left and I just kind of like, it's like, I'm not going to do that. And I know a lot of the, I, I know a lot of the people who still travel with him and I met them there and, and I could see their like craving for community and craving to be part of something bigger. And um, I see them still involved now. And I'm like, no, mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, <sighs> sounds, that's yeah, my I mean, it, almost joined a cult story. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds very similar to my experience, minus the scuba diving. But um, yeah, so the cult that I almost joined was the Teal Swan cult. <laughs> and yes. the reason that I asked you about, like, if you were in a vulnerable space when you found Bento Box is because... I was in a super vulnerable space in my life when I found Teal. And mm -hmm. I've just been noticing that it seems like a lot of people find these guru type people when they're really in the depths of their own hell. And yeah, yeah. they just want answers, especially with an open head, right? Yeah. Um, so at the time, I was going through like a really, really hard breakup. And I was also just like, so ridiculous when it came to relationships I could not get my head out of my ass to understand how to just be in a relationship mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was lying and deceiving people and wanting to like have my cake and eat it too and then hurting people and then getting hurt and it was just so bad <laughs> and so much mental suffering and pain and I just remember like laying in my bed one day just crying and being like why am I the way I am why can't I just change and so I started going on YouTube and sure enough like Teal Swan pops up and has all these answers has all the answers that I'm looking for right she has an answer for literally everything are those answers correct that's up for debate <laughs> but at the time my open head was like Yes, answers. Um, and I will say that her teachings really kind of got me out of that dark hole. But mm -hmm. it's almost like when somebody kind of saves you from a dark place, you end up putting yes. them up on a pedestal and you're like, mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because they were the, you're crediting them, even though it was me, 
it was me having the awareness. It, it was mm-hmm. just her that gave me something to respond to. I was still giving all of the credit to her. Mm-hmm. Um, so I kind of worshiped her a bit. It was, it was strange, but I never got involved with any of her communities. Like I know she had a Facebook group that was huge and I never got mm-hmm. into that. Um, and I ended up going to her completion process training because it was when I was, you know, I had been doing Reiki and energy work for probably a year at that time. And I could just feel that I wanted more. You know, there were some times in sessions where I felt like I didn't know what I was doing. And if somebody was having a huge emotional expression and um, really feeling a lot of pain and hurt, I didn't know how to support them. And it seemed like mm-hmm. her work was very supportive of that, of like trauma healing and just holding space and whatever. Um, And I will say it was a great training. Like the content that she taught was great. And I learned a lot from it, but it also wasn't really hers. It was like somatic Mm -hmm. experiencing and hypnosis techniques. And she was just like packaging it up as something that she invented, but it wasn't actually her teaching, you know, it was like, whatever. Um, So yeah, I'll never forget. I, so Basically, I had to fly to Utah, and then the houses that we were staying at were an hour away from the airport, so we were supposed to meet at, like, a coffee shop with other people and carpool, and I pull up to this coffee shop, and I just see this whole group of people, and they're all wearing, like, her shirts, you know, with all the colors, all the crazy colors, and people have, like, dreads, and, like, it's just, like, you know, the stereotypical, like, spiritual vibe. And Mm -hmm. I had actually never been in a group of people like that because so far the trainings that I had gone to were for, like, body workers. And it was people that just didn't express themselves in that way. Not that there's Mm -hmm. anything wrong with that. But to me, it was like, oh, God, I just got this sinking feeling of, like, what did I get myself into? Mm -hmm. And I walk up and somebody goes, oh, are you a tealer? And I was like, (laughs) oh, no, (laughs) they have a name for themselves. (laughs) Uh huh. And that is something that just cringes my individual circuitry when somebody like labels you as the thing that you're into, or you know, when influencers like part like, of have a... nicknames, yeah, yeah, like for their people that follow them or whatever. It literally irks my entire body. So I was just like, oh fuck, and mm. it just. I knew from then and you know, I did Mm -hmm. find some really great people there that I'm still connected with today. Like you, it's like, thank God that that weird situation brought us together and I really honor those friendships, but it was the people that I'm still connected to from that were like the other ones that were like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like what's going on here? (laughs) Um, And it was a small handful because pretty much everybody there seemed to literally want to kiss the ground that she walked on. And she had Mm -hmm. bodyguards usher her in Mm -hmm. and she literally sat on like a throne. Like they had her on this stage with like this big comfy chair and only she was allowed to sit in that chair. And there was just very like culty whispers, Yes, you know, there was one day where she, um, she was, we did a Q and a the first day and anybody could just ask her anything before we got into our training. And, she was like talking about very controversial things like racism and all of that. And I'm like, I don't know. It was just a weird flavor. It was like, she was very dismissive of anybody that wanted to share their own lived experience. And she kind of did that nurse. I don't know. I guess it's kind of narcissistic, but that thing where it's like, you can never be, or she can never be wrong because she's always Mm going to flip it back on you in some way. Like, Oh, this is just a mirror for your subconscious. Or this is just, it's very dismissive of people's actual lived experience. So, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, there was definitely some red flags going off for me there. And even then I was like, maybe she's right. Maybe it all is just a mirror and like, da da da. And then there was another day where she called out the group shadow. Oh, this was crazy. She called out the group shadow and and the, the group shadow is what she, whatever she's picking up on as a subconscious. And mind you, she is a reflector. So she very much could have been picking up on a group shadow or whatever, Mm -hmm. a communal (laughs) shadow for all of us. But the calamity that ensued because of this and the trauma, um, trauma responses that came out of people from being told you're getting into this work for the wrong reasons. Cause that's, that was the group shadow is that basically all of us were getting into this work for like narcissistic reasons and not to really help people. And, um, it was like, 
I don't know. She really went there though. She really mm-hmm. went there. And mm-hmm. I could just see so many people's nervous systems so dysregulated. And again, maybe she wasn't wrong. I'm not saying she was wrong, right. but the way that it was all handled was like such a shit show. Um, and yeah, it was like, she could never take responsibility for her own self in that whole thing. It was like, I'm just, a, I'm just a mirror. That's all I am. And maybe, so, a ref- maybe a reflector is right. But that's what Ventino would always say is they're just a mirror to you. There's just a mirror. And then so wrapped up in this mirror consciousness. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah. I, yeah. when, when I was at the retreat, we like, there was one woman who couldn't walk very well. Um, I can't remember if she was in some sort of mobility device or not. Anyway, he was like coaching her through why she couldn't walk. And he basically was just saying like, it's because you don't want to walk or you're not meant to walk and you're not here to walk and you have to transcend wanting to walk. And I mean, like it was fucking wild. It was just fucking wild. And if, if the chart that we see is correct, he's very like splenic projector, you know, <clears throat> very fascinating and looking at their designs yeah. too and I was actually talking to um, Amanda about this yesterday how you can look at their designs and kind of remove the emotion of it and just see who they yeah. are and how they operate and it's like well that's doesn't make it r- correct or right you know but they're kind of operating within their design yeah, totally. And I mean, I knew about human design at the time. I wasn't in as deep as I am. I had probably been like loosely studying it for maybe a year at the time, but I didn't really understand reflectors. To me, they were like this magical, mystical unicorn, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. they are. <laughs> but mm-hmm. I almost put her up on a pedestal because I knew she was a reflector too. And because mm-hmm. she would talk about it too. She'd be like, I'm a reflector in human design. I am a mirror mm-hmm. for your subconscious. Mm-hmm. And um, she would use that to her like um Kiara said in here that reflectors who are not self are agents of the program yeah yeah and yeah. that's very much what it felt like with her it felt like she was using the human design information to almost mm-hmm. like be her ammo for us to believe her even more and mm-hmm. it wasn't yeah, and I and again it was like weird being with her in person because I could actually feel that how it wasn't it didn't feel genuine mm-hmm. you know um you can feel somebody through a video, but you can really feel them. In really person. feel them in person. So before you join a cult, get in person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which we, um, not a cult, but we went to Human Design um, conference down in Santa Fe. Jonah put it on, and it was incredible. And you can really feel that that was not a cult. <laughs> like when you're there, it's like that's not a cult. There's no like it's. It felt so good. Um, but even Mike, um, High Desert Human Design did a talk. His name on here is High Desert Human Design. But he did a mm-hmm. talk about, remember, we couldn't go, but then we went to lunch with him and he told us the summary of the talk. And oh, it was yeah, like yeah. how to escape the cult of human mm-hmm. design or something. Mm-hmm. And that was really cool because at the time I was almost like, I feel like I was kind of in the human design sauce, you know, and mm-hmm. I needed to have that awareness from a projector that this could easily become a cult as well. And, and, and really I like how he made it simple. He was like, cults exist everywhere in our life. Like money is a cult. It's just something that the group, a group buys into, like a group Mm -hmm. believes in. Um, So just being aware of like the effects of that culty thinking and well, and in the human design, if you're a yes, you're a yes. (laughs) Like if it's Mm -hmm. a yes for you, yeah (laughs) then hey if you're following your own strategy and authority and you're listening to your own authority within that and you somehow end up in a cult and you're like maybe you were like i'm meant to be here you Mm -hmm. know i I was a yes again looking back at like the no choice of it all Mm -hmm. neither of us had any choice but no we did have the well we didn't have the choice our minds became aware of what was happening Mm -hmm. Yeah, we also have a lot of now lived experience from that. And I have a lot of things to like pull from that I'm like, will not be doing that or things to look out for, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, like, I think when I was introduced into human design, like one of the first things I did was Google it. And I Googled, is human design a cult? Because (laughs) I didn't want to be part of another cult. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, I've done that before. I need to make sure. And of course there's like articles where people are like, human design's a cult. And then I was like, nah, nah, nah. And then I go through, I'm like, but who's the cult leader? Right. Who's, who's the leader? What to do? Who's the leader? <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And definitely, I'm sure in some human design communities, there is somebody that like takes advantage of that or, or is even, I, I mean, I witness myself doing it sometimes and now I just have the awareness. I'll be like, usually it's a fifth line where I'm mm -hmm. like, I am not worthy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I'm like, Oh, I feel myself putting this fifth line on a pedestal and thinking that mm -hmm. they know more than I do and thinking mm -hmm. they know what's best for me when they're really, you know, they're here to present practical solutions. They're not claiming to be my guru. Mm -hmm. And it's, mm -hmm. it's just funny how our minds end up doing that. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, like thinking of like cults have a purpose to like, you know, like, do something all together and make it all together. And I'm like, if human design's a cult, like, you know, to make everybody better. And I'm like, it's not really like, there's no like good or bad or, you know, making it better. It's like, you're on your own trajectory. Right. Mm -hmm. And if anything, we're all just like, heads up 2027. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Get into your body. <laughs> yeah. Get into your body. Listen to your own body. Cool. I'm just going to be over here. Cult yep. 30 of one. You do you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know if anything, if you really, I mean, I feel like if you really use human design in the way that it was probably meant to be used, whatever, mm -hmm. if, if it was mm -hmm. meant to be used in a certain way, it's the anti cult. Yeah. But be, just because it, it, you start to have this awareness of, oh, this is my body giving me this signal that this is not okay for me. You know, mm -hmm. like we both explained having at these culty things mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. taking responsibility for your own autonomy, you know? Yeah. yeah. Or at least feeling empowered in that. Whereas before I would just feel like I needed to go along with everything. Yeah. Or my mind would, my mind would say, you need to go along with everything. So people like you. It looks like Sammy to be a part of this cool cult is Googling what comes up when you type in is human design and is human design a cult is the first Google option. Is human design real? <laughs> is, is human design legit? Is human design astrology? Yeah. I mean, it could be yeah. all of those things. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you, and that's something to watch out to or watch out for with, huh? <laughs> <laughs> words, words, words. <laughs> Um, but like, if someone wants to is, be aware, if someone's like trying to make a cult out of human design, like they want to have their own cult where there's like a, you know, a leader, <laughs> the specific, just watch out, use your own discernment, watch out, get right with your authority. If you're sacral and you're not, or if you're a sacral being head on over to being sacral and Teresa and I can help you out. <laughs> we'll help you out. And then That's your authority our might Wait. be like fuck you mm -hmm. and I'm like cool your authority says so bye yeah <laughs> that's another yeah. thing too cult red flag is if you try to do what your intuition your authority whatever you want to call it is telling you to do and they mm -hmm. basically tell you that you're not correct and you mm -hmm. are you know what are the things we've heard I mean in the bento box one it was like your um bas he was basically saying they have like demonic attachments if mm. they are listening mm -hmm. to their own Dis <laughs> distortions yeah distortions mm -hmm. you have a service to service to self entity attached to you what <sighs> go listen to that I mean, podcast y'all okay is, and, the, and the i mean whole and, time and so i'm just looking at this through the human design lens too which that's what he was doing when when i was in the retreat was pointing people up on stage and kind of going through their distortions which is really fucked up. But um, it's like, <clears throat> if we look at that through the human design lens, we can look at when we're in transference and this is a little bit more advanced, but they're like, depending on your motivation or is it your motivation? Like angels, demons, ghosts, mm -hmm. it is, spirits, yeah. aliens, you know? So there's things that you could potentially like <laughs> connect to in transference. Also, bento box is innocence, potential, probably innocence motivation, definitely working from a place of desire, speaking to other entities. Hmm. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> it just all makes sense through a human design lens. You can really like 
pick apart anything. I want to catch this comment that Jen said real quick. It starts feeling like a cult when people get on here and start blaming and shaming others. And then someone comes on claiming to be speaking on behalf of the whole. Ah. <gasps> that gets me like riled up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. that gets because ego it's fired the science up. of differentiation. You can't speak on behalf of the whole the I don't whole of yourself you can speak on but yeah <laughs> I mean and I know like fifth lines are here to universalize and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's but that's universalizing through their own perception of reality mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. through their own filters so and fourth lines we externalize but it doesn't mean that it's we're just externalizing our own stuff yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I mean fourth lines are very influential as well and yeah. I've watched this happen with me and with you, with every fourth line I know, there's this very influential power to our externalizations, um, which is why mm -hmm. I tend to speak a lot of disclaimers these days. I'm like, this is just my experience. This might not be for you. Da, da, da. <laughs> because it's, I, I feel that power of the, that influential fourth line, <laughs> man. Yeah. Kiara says, haha, me obsessed with demons and transference. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I worked as a psychic medium for a bit. <laughs> uh, third line is ghosts, desire. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. I've been bumping into ghosts my whole life. I always wondered why I couldn't see ghosts. Man. Uh-huh. <laughs> it was so easy for me. I literally just one day decided I was going to be a psychic medium because I'm like, well, I've been talking to ghosts my whole life. I might as well get paid for it. Yeah. <laughs> And then the more I got into my design, the more I lost my response for it. And I was like, why? And I even had a moment where I freaked out. I was like, why am I losing my response for this? I'm doing really well. My business is building, like, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I just literally couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Sammy, I've had some chats on the other side and transference as well. I think we all have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It really is crazy what starts to happen when you yeah. um, are just following your own authority. There becomes mm -hmm. no desire for me, no desire to like speak to things outside of me, you know, and, and take it as like authority. You mm -hmm. know, we get this question. We've had this question come up in our responding class and our integration calls. Can I respond to like channeled messages? Can I respond to, and it's like, that is still not a response shows up in the external. Something to respond to comes in from the external. So if it's coming like a manifester, <laughs> that's a manifester. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is the, the difference. <laughs> <laughs> like, and then even then manifestors wait mm -hmm. until they have the urge. And it's just like, that's a whole nother, it ain't who it. am I to tell you? I'm just like, I mean, go experiment with seeing how that works out for you. I don't know. I'll tell seeing you, how it worked out terribly for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll it's tell you, it worked out terribly for me and then say, but you know, some of us got to learn the hard way. So do you, go do you. <laughs> yeah. I had to learn the hard way. I can't yeah. see any comments if you want to read them. She's cracking me up. Is it the Pleiades or is it a rogue crystal bundle? <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> the amount of books that I have on aliens. I think I got rid of a lot of mine. Well, because too, I look at it now as outer authority. I'm not going to let something else like be the authority of me. I'm not going to, why do I even want to entertain that with my fucking open head? Right. Are you crazy? Like in my undefined Ajna, I will be sitting there like spinning, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. if I'm trying to respond to like whatever, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And usually I'm in my transferred motivation. The more I'm in, and, and here's what's interesting too, that I notice is I, as I was kind of moving deeper into my, like living my design, I would start to feel like I lost my connection. Mm -hmm. But I was gaining a deeper connection with myself, but I thought mm -hmm. I was losing this grandiose connection to the all. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wait a minute, I have the all is in here. And I mean, it was just this really like mind fuck situation where I would think that I was like, I lost a connection to something. I lost my 
people who are supposed to tell me what to do, you know? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm like, no, I, nothing tells me what to do. <laughs> yeah. I just respond. That's it. I Did mean, you feel and, that at all? Yeah. I mean, and, and still my open head is going to be like, we actually don't know if aliens exist or not. We don't know. Yeah. We don't know. I know human design says they don't, but we actually yeah. don't know. <laughs> we, we will ne some of these things we might never actually know and so yeah. also I just want to say if you believe in that kind of stuff that's yeah. that's Fine. for you to believe in you know I'm not saying I, I don't believe in it now um I I like the I like anything that's kind of like mythological or yeah. uh, magical yeah. and that mm -hmm. kind of thing and so mm -hmm. that that was what lured me into the whole alien scene was like the fantasy of it all and mm -hmm. So I just think it's fun, but mm -hmm. I don't take it seriously. I'm not like, mm -hmm. oh, those aliens are making my decisions. <laughs> Why? Because then they have completely. like power. Then something has mm -hmm. power over you. And if you're not empowering your, yourself, then something else has power over you. And you always look into this external thing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Like I'm not certain of anything. Like I still don't even know if the world is flat or if it's round. And it drives my husband <laughs> crazy that I say that. <laughs> but I'm not like a flat earth person, but I also don't know if I'm a round earth person because I don't fucking know. I have actually, like, I have not gone never, to space. <laughs> I have never seen if it is, I have never been there. I don't know. People, other people have, that's outer authority to me. And I'm still like, I don't know. Mm, I, don't know. <laughs> I don't have a clear yes or no. <laughs> so I'm just like, who the fuck knows? I hope it's, I hope that it's fine that we're just hurling through earth, whether it's flat or if it's round, or if, even if we're hurling through earth, I just hope it's all good. Same. <laughs> Same Z's. Yeah. I feel like there's just so much we don't understand about our universe that we will never understand about it. Obviously mm -hmm. human design gives us theories. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you know, that's really what they are. I mean, that's for you to decide whether it is your truth or not. Yeah, absolutely. I'll say that. I'll say that. Absolutely. Because somebody could be like, yeah, I am a psychic medium and this is who I am. And, you know, and it comes and you can feel the difference of that place that it comes from. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Um, you can feel when there's no ego involved as far as they're not trying to oh, like and this is where it's fascinating. I love looking at the charts of people too, because mm -hmm. they have nothing to like a lot of times undefined or open ego. They have nothing to prove and they're not trying to prove anything. They're just mm -hmm. like, oh, bro, this is who I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there, I mean, don't get me wrong. I think there are some psychic mediums doing really beautiful work out there. And yep. it, it's like, it doesn't yep. matter what the way I look at it, as long as they're not like telling you what decisions to make and you're not giving your outer, mm -hmm. you're giving your authority away. Yes. If you need to like, talk to a psychic medium for closure and because that was my favorite thing about doing it is I felt like I gave people closure around somebody mm -hmm. that had passed mm -hmm. um and I helped them believe in a little bit of magic you know it was like mm -hmm. oh this ma this world is magical and there are so many things that we don't understand I don't even know what I'm doing when I'm talking to these ghosts um but that was my favorite thing about it, it was just like helping yeah. people believe in magic and giving people closure and there can be a clean way that that's done. I, I believe at least, but <clears throat> well, you can yeah. recognize, you can recognize when somebody's giving you outer authority. I mean, if you're connected to your body, so let's be connected to our bodies, get right, you know, get right with your authority, experiment with your design, you know, experiment with your strategy. And then when you receive that outer authority, it will either be, <sighs> or it will be like, you know, you're like, mm -hmm. oh, there's this, uh, you can feel that. Mm -hmm. You can feel that when you are in your body. Um, let's see here. Jesse says, it's so funny to me how some people spend so much energy thinking about whether the earth is flat or round when most of us can't even regulate our own nervous system. <laughs> exactly. Why are we, you know, like, there's so many conversations going on. Like, here's, this is right. This is the way, and this is how it is. And this is this, and this is a good cult. And this is a bad cult. It's just mind like, shit. <laughs> is your fucking nervous system regulated? Do you know how to do that? Do you feel safe in your body? Are you hopping into your human design experiment in a completely dysregulated state? Maybe, but I mean, probably everybody, but are you, 
you know, following your strategy and authority will lead you to things that will, you know, potentially help you regulate your nervous system. And then you're going to be able to connect with your authority better. It's kind of like this cyclical thing. You have to feel safe in your body. Human design doesn't fix everything. Human design isn't for every part of your life. If you, somebody else said this, if you're like completely broke, you have no food, no roof over your head, don't start trying to think about how you're, you know, you got to get right with certain things. Sometimes we got to make decisions that are maybe go against our authority so we can get out of survival so that we can get above water and breathe. Mm -hmm. And then you can start entertaining, but that might be different for everybody still. You know, right. people might still be like, well, I'm going to, you know, follow my strategy and authority to get me out of the water. Cool. Try that experiment with it. But it's not going to fix every emotional turmoil in your life. It's not going to fix every relationship. It's not a fixing tool. It's not something that's going to promise you anything. There's no guarantees in human design of what what's going to happen in your life. And I think like bringing it full circle when you're in these cults and when you have these gurus, they are promising you things mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, even religion, you know, it's all, well, if you behave and you don't sin, then you're going to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. Right. And so th that's such a great way to control people because mm -hmm. fear is very um, <clears throat> effective. <laughs> mm -hmm. so if anybody is instilling fear in you even human design if you're feeling afraid like oh if i make a bad decision or if i fuck up or mm -hmm. then like i'm i'm my not self and i'm not gonna be on my trajectory and that's what i end up not liking about some of the conversations that happen around following your design and your strategy and authority and whatever is like for me at least i used to get all up in my head am i listening to my authority and my fault you know mm -hmm. it, d d d and it was just this whole like mental pressure anxiety oh no if i make a wrong decision then oh no <laughs> yeah it's like, you, you're you don't have to live to any outer authority even in the human design community there's nobody yes. who's an authority over you mm-hmm mm -hmm. Yeah. And if I, if you make mental decisions, oh, you made a mental well, decision. Well. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're too lost in the sauce in human design, put the books away, put the lectures away and live your life. Yeah. Just start living your damn life is just watching yourself, you know, mm -hmm. having that awareness, just observing. Oh, that, mm -hmm. cool. That's what I did. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you'll, you'll have awareness. You'll just start to you'll be able to just start to watch it. And then you'll be like, oh, you'll get little glimpses like, oh, I just like watched myself do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Interesting. And, and oh, my mind kind of freaked out about me doing that thing, but it felt really good for me to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I did it. And Sammy says, oh, let's see. Kira says, in the mind trying to take back the reins and interpret the experience. Absolutely. It will do that all the time. The mind loves stories and making it all make sense. And it's the commentator. <laughs> and then Sammy says, it's so funny because it's literally one giant game of telephone with source material. And mm -hmm. it is, which is why we always direct people straight back to it. You know, because it's like, what, a, you know, that, even when I do sessions, I'll read the keynotes, right. And I'll say, mm -hmm. how does that feel in your body? What is your mm -hmm. interpretation of that? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, a design of a transmitter or whatever. What does that word mean to you? A lot of, yes. especially when it's a channel that I don't have, because like, of yeah. course, if it's a channel I have, I have my own <laughs> perception of how that looks. Um, but even then people are going to have different flavors and different mm -hmm lived experience that colors that so i like it to be like a deconstruction of uh our own perceptions of these words and what they mean to mm -hmm. us because mm -hmm. that those words are going to sit differently with each person also words are just words mm -hmm. frequency <laughs> is we're moving into a space of frequency where words are just fucking whatever you know, you know, one could argue that words are frequency. No, um, absolutely, and they and they are, but they carry is it so they carry a frequency. They carry right? a frequency. But then don't focus. But our so minds much on... get tripped up on mm -hmm, the meaning of the mm -hmm, word. Mm -hmm, you know, where mm -hmm. that's where I like to say, how does this feel? What comes mm -hmm. up for you when you hear mm -hmm. that? You know, or when you when it lands, mm -hmm. uh, because it does carry a frequency, and it's a frequency that might feel different from person to person. Mm -hmm. 
Oh uh, yeah, genetic yoga. Ultimately, human design is for babies. Ra respected any adult volunteering entering into it. He had it thrust upon him. Abs one hundred percent. He says this in like almost every lecture I've listened to. It's for the kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's for the kids. It's for the kids. Yep. <clears throat> But as adults, we sure love to talk about it, don't we? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. We love it. <laughs> My defined throat? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about it. Oh, there's a question in the question box. Let's see. Oh, I'm not answering that one. <laughs> oh. It was, <laughs> she was just, asked, it was Carla asking um, what other guests that we're going to have on. Oh. You'll have to wait and see, but it's so good. <gasps> So good. Yo, our lineup is stacked. Yeah. I mean, we're starting it off with Martin Grassinger. You can just so only imagine. Out with a bang. Let your mind go wild. <laughs> <laughs> we want to have a little bit of uh what's the word? Build up. Build up. The suspense. Suspense, that's what I was looking for. We want to have a little bit of a suspense, but you know. We've got some um, great people. There's a question. Do you guys have any thoughts on how dogmatic older people tend to get with the system? I wouldn't even stick that to older people. I mean, it's a, it's not even an old system. If you're talking about like first gen students, mm -hmm. um, that's correct for them, you know, to, to transmit it that way. And it's, we all have specific ways that we feel um, the system resonates with us. Um, Teresa and I really resonate with source material, mm -hmm. but we're not like fundamentalists. You know, I do have 20 point, I think it's 20.1, which is the dogmatist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the detriment of that can definitely be like taking information and being very dogmatic about it. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember the exact keynotes, but mm -hmm. I remember reading it and being like, oh, that's how mm -hmm. I was for a little while. Mm -hmm. And now I really just come from the space of like, yeah, I prefer source material. That's mm -hmm. what I want to take in. I also love, 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 love hearing about individual lived mm -hmm. experience through yes. the lens, you know, or even just individual lived experience when they don't have the lens of human design. And then my mind is like puzzling together <laughs> the human design mm -hmm. pieces of it. <laughs> but I just... I love hearing people share, even if I don't agree with them, you know, yeah. even if my perspective is completely different, I'm not their design. I haven't had their lived experience period, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And for me, it's a very tribal thing. Like I want to make sure that I'm providing resources for the tribe that are the, something that can sustain, you know, nourish them. And sometimes distortions of the system can aren't sustainable and aren't providing that cellular transformation. And then I see people want to be like, this doesn't work. And it's like, well, human design isn't meant to like work. <laughs> it's, not, it's not something that you're like, you know, do a vision board and be like, Oh, look, that doesn't work for me. You know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a completely different thing. Yeah, I think, you know, at least from my personal experience with, um, like, the more popular human design, the more, like, I would say, easy to digest mm -hmm. versions of it that exist out there. Because, again, I don't mm -hmm. think there's anything wrong with that. But for me, myself, I reached a point where I had hit a wall. And I mm -hmm. was not gaining in awareness. I was just gaining frustration. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was mm -hmm. like, I... I wasn't satiated with what mm -hmm. I was getting. And so that's where source material just like slammed my head against the wall and was like, <laughs> this is the stuff you should read. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's two, there's like different parts of that too, where even with more with popular human design, you know, sometimes people who prefer source material will get called like fundamentalists or dogmatic and all of that where I always almost could say the same thing about that flip it around mm -hmm. like you're preaching your own version as mm -hmm. as the way and I'm like all of that is just so weird I just want to talk about human design with people <laughs> who are living their design 
and the cool lived experience that they have by implementing the system into their life. Mm -hmm. Blah. That's it. Just kiss. <laughs> um, they're talking about Elise Myers. We would like to see her chart too. We asked. She never yeah, answered. Yeah. So maybe she thought yeah. we were trying to steal her identity. Yeah. We're not trying to steal her. Elise Myers, <laughs> if you get to hear this at all. This one <laughs> we're not clip. trying to steal your identity. <laughs> we're not trying to steal your identity. We just need to know because there are several charts in that one day that you were born. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you kind of could be them all. <laughs> I'm going to say, though, I'm pretty sold on her oh. being a sacral being. There was a new oh, yeah. video that she did recently, and I was like, that is sacral excitement. Mm -hmm. Like, whatever she mm -hmm. was talking about was like, Lua! oh, it was mm -hmm. her um, Patreon. She started a mm -hmm. Patreon, and she saw that was a sacral being super excited about what they're doing when yeah. I saw that video. That that yeah. was my interpretation of it, at least. Yeah. Again, I've... I know plenty of people out there think she's a projector and I, I know I don't, see I don't, it. Know, I don't, but I just I don't, don't see, see it. it. I don't see it. She spends way too much time on her, on her TikToks, like putting emojis in and stuff. Like I feel like that takes a lot of energy and she even talks about how long it takes her. And mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like she has the, I think she has, a, she might have she, the 1648. I think that may mm -hmm. be a part of her design, which to me, like, yeah, you know, that's being able to yeah, really, yeah do something over and over yeah. again and get like whatever yeah. go deep with it um yeah. but yeah she just and when she's like walking on a treadmill yeah i just <laughs> the multitasking it i don't know i feel like if she was a projector she's in a place with enough content probably with like however she's doing through the creator fund and all of the partners she did a super bowl ad and all of the you know mm -hmm. i feel she's like killing it. we would see, we would see a lot more of her resting on her tiktoks or, you know, I don't know. I mean, she yes. could, here's the possibility. She could be a super conditioned, super generator projector. <laughs> she could be. She just feels buzzy. But she just feels buzzy to me. That That's mm -hmm. the, that's really the only thing I'm basing it off of is a mm -hmm. feeling. Because I feel like a lot mm -hmm. of the things she's doing, a projector could easily be doing if they were very conditioned and not mm -hmm. in their rest cycles and whatnot. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. But Elise mm -hmm. Myers... I would love to know. You know, we got so close and Nita tagged out there. me in, in her, one of her things and Elise responded and said, um, what, do you, like, what do you need to know? Yeah. What, what you... kind of, what kind of birth information we talk in or something like that. And then I was like, <gasps> exact time, please. Exact time. That's all we need. <laughs> it's her birth. I mean, her birthday is out there and her location, but it's, we just need that time, Elise. Yeah. We need to settle the yeah. score. <laughs> I know. I know. And also Wikipedia, if you, when you put famous people or influencers in there, please put their birth time. That would just be, <laughs> be so great. much easier. Well, I, guess I don't want to see their astro chart. That. Sometimes they'll be like, here's their astro chart. And I'm like, but where's the birth information? Come on. <laughs> I need specifics, people. <laughs> also, human design. Don't forget. Mm -hmm. um, genetic yoga says uh, human design is a real science based on numbers and numbers don't lie. You see them expressed uniquely through us as individuals. 100% sign mm -hmm. it off. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. I yep. love that. And even within, like I, we might have mentioned this before, depending on where you're at in your human design journey, um, each gate has like 1,000 potentials <laughs> behind it. Like, because <laughs> there's color, tone, base. And the combinations of how that gate is going to express, you know, mm -hmm. oh, it's just fascinating. The uniqueness is just beyond what we could even imagine. Uh huh. Yeah, Kiara, Astro theme is good for celebrity birth info, but it doesn't always have the time. And it's not like these influencers aren't like celebrities yet. So sometimes yeah, that's what's hard. celebrities birth stuff and we can't find it then we just go to their social media and find their birthday posts <laughs> sometimes but you know sometimes. what as a fourth line i have been i had like a list of like five influencers that i really yeah. wanted to know i'm not going to mm -hmm. talk about the details here but let's just say my network came in real strong with a few of them and, and it I was, was like, boom, away. boom, boom. It was like in one week. <laughs> it was all in the same week. It was just like, all of a sudden, Teresa's like, I have this dream list. 
and the only person left is Elise Myers. <laughs> Straight up, she's the only one I'm like obsessing over right now. So, you know, do I do I um, have a lot of time on my hands to obsess about this? Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe. Do we have a large network of fourth lines that also want to obsess about this? Maybe. Yes. <laughs> Can confirm <laughs> that want to externalize about this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> uh, we need Sammy <sighs> to Sammy's frequency to just whoosh, yeah. get it. I mean she Sammy got one of them, so I know. Yeah. I know. I know. That I fourth know. line connection. Both people that came through for me were, were fourth lines. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just chatting it up. Yeah. Fourth lines, don't be afraid to externalize. Yeah. I think that's where mm-hmm. some fourth lines get confused with the manifestation stuff because it will like the spiritual manifestation yeah. because it will Ooh, feel let's talk about let's talk oh. about that. Okay, the cult of manifestation. Yeah. <laughs> of spiritual manifestation, not the way the human yeah. design describes it, but um yeah, I feel like a lot of fourth lines get sucked into that stuff because mm-hmm. we will notice that what we externalize will I, I hate to use the word manifest, show up. but it show, show, it up. show up. It's like, oh, I, I will say out loud to Brandy, I want to see so-and-so's chart. I don't know if I'll ever get their birth information. And then two days later, via a weird <laughs> Via a weird DM in the middle of the night, we get to find this dude's <laughs> chart that we've been wanting to see. <laughs> or like, you know, our network builds on what we externalize. So... If I'm talking about human design, I used to say, I just want to talk to a bunch of people. Like, cause I was alone mm-hmm. in my experiment for like two years. And I would just say, I just want to talk to a bunch of people that are like having fun with this and they want to mm-hmm. speak the language with me. And so I just started externalizing about human design mm-hmm. and lo and behold, now I have a whole HD network. Right. You know, so for one me. could say, well, you manifested that. <laughs> it, 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 uh, it is, it is like that. And it's incredible because like people would ask me to teach a manifestation class brandy can you teach a class on like this was years ago and they'd be like on how you just like and i'm like i don't know i just talk and stuff shows up i have no idea what is going on but now that i understand human design i'm like oh i'm just externalizing to my network and boom i mean but there have been some pretty wild things that have shown up and I'm like, I have no actual explanation for how that happened. <laughs> Forces. It was on your trajectory, you know. Well, there's... like, here's a fucking crazy one. I don't know if I've shared this on here. But I actually just found a picture of it the other day. So I'll post it in my stories afterwards because it's quite hilarious. But my son had a birth- was having a birthday party at a hotel. And I had made all these cupcakes at home. And I needed to bring the cupcakes down to the hotel. It was like a hundred cupcakes. I'm like, how the hell am I supposed to get these cupcakes down there? You know, I'm like, I could put them in a box and blah, blah, blah. Well, I needed to go get to the store to get more frosting. So I'm driving and I'm just thinking about how I'm going to trans transport. Why can't I say words? Transport these cupcakes. <laughs> and I shit you not. I'm at a stop light and I see on the side of the road, these cardboard things that look like they have little whole little spots in them it's like a cardboard flat with these little circles and I see one on the ground next to a box and I'm like people are just driving by and I'm like what is that so I pull over and it's fucking cardboard cupcake holders and this one flat and I was like what's in this box so I open up the box and it was an entire box of them like they fell off a fucking truck And I come home and I show Andy and he's like, what the hell? Where did you get those? I was like, on the side of the road. They just showed up on the side of the road. But I don't know how they got there. You had to like be tuned in and aware because you could have easily driven by them. Totally. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I could have. But that's the shit that people are like, you manifested that. And I was like, I don't fucking have any idea. I didn't actually like nobody in my unless my network is the, the earth. Maybe it is. And it just <laughs> provided. <laughs> I mean, it was the strangest fucking thing I've ever experienced. Well, no, because I've had more stuff like that happen, which is why people think that it's all mystical. But 
I'm mm-hmm. like, it literally showed up on the side of the road. I have no idea. And so it was is, enough for a hundred cupcakes. This is just my mind, but I have a theory with like, mm-hmm. I don't know, maybe with hope motivation that in order for you to be like cleanly providing hope to others Mm -hmm. crazy shit like that needs to happen to you without you even trying so that you can show up as that beacon of hope because otherwise you don't have stories you don't have the conditioning to like make anybody believe or I mean not that people need to believe you because it's just your frequency that communicates that but Mm -hmm. you are in such like clean hope Mm -hmm. motivation Mm -hmm. more so because those things have happened to you yeah, because I was but. that no, that totally feels yes, because I was not actually taking any action to get those cupcakes. I was just like Andy was like, he's guilt, so he's like, We gotta figure out how we're gonna get these fucking cupcakes. Yeah, I gotta and take I'm action. Like, he's like, We have to leave in an hour, and I'm like, It's fine, I need to frost some more, I'll just go to the store, it'll work, it'll be fine. If we need to like put them in the trunk on a foil, it'll it'll be fine. They're gonna get there. It's probable that they'll get there. We'll just see how it happens. And then I find the fucking cupcake holders. <sighs> so cool. Well, <laughs> probability view. <laughs> and then you hoped. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's easy to get sucked into that manifestation culture because then you want to create things from the mind. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. you're, you're trying to bring things into form from your mind and what your mind thinks that you want. And Oh, sorry. Just got a message of somebody else confirming podcast guests or, or coffee talk guests. Sorry, I just flipped down. I got excited responding. Okay, I'm going to come back. <laughs> <laughs> Sacral excitement. <laughs> so, um, yeah, like you start to like want the things from the mind space and then you're doing things and probably just initiating the shit through life regardless of your type to get the thing that your mind thinks you want. And then how many times have we manifested things through the lens of spiritual manifestation that actually have not been good for us at all? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Things that you think you want. And obviously it was meant to happen to you, Mm -hmm. but um, I think sometimes things happen to show us no choice that we don't always the mind doesn't always know why the mind tries to like understand why this thing is happening mm-hmm. and the mind wants to take credit for the thing mm-hmm. happening when it just mm-hmm. is it's just happening mm-hmm. <laughs> and mm-hmm. the mind is just there to watch but the mind's like oh i did that <laughs> you know? um genetic yoga if you're still on here asking me a question do we want to hear a human design joke <laughs> yes yes we want to hear a human design joke <clears throat> when the Sammy says when the mind isn't filling the forefront and we are able to witness life happening absolutely and actually like more like mystical things happen we talk about this a lot with our generators um over at being sacral that like so let, your, the, let your response surprise you mm-hmm. let things surprise you because within that, you just start to see this, like, beauty unfolding that your mind couldn't even, like, create, you know. And then circling back to cults, like, you are the creator. <laughs> and you get trapped into that. You are the creator. Well, shit, if I'm creating this, then I better not create that. And then mm-hmm. I should create this. And then you're all up here. Oh, the thing that I really didn't like about, like, Teal Swan's cult <laughs> was that <laughs> they all believed that, like, if they were having – something traumatic happen that it was like in their life that it was because of trauma that happened that was completely out of their control as a child Mm. so it's Mm. like oh if I get if something really bad happens to me as an adult it's it's my fault because I haven't healed this trauma that happened from when I was a child and it's Mm -hmm. repeating the trauma Mm -hmm. is just repeating and she would even be like yeah basically sucks to suck that's just how it is you know, because mm-hmm. people will be like, well, what about people that don't have any awareness of trauma and like they don't know that they're repeating and that they have the power to heal this and this won't keep repeating for them and mirroring to them. And she'd just mm-hmm. be like, yeah, sucks to suck. Yeah. <laughs> that is a terrible way to. And I believe I believed that shit for a very long time. Same. Same. Or it felt like and... a long time that I believed it. <laughs> 
Oh, it's just the mind. It's, it's the mind and trying it's, to like. That's traumatizing on its own, too. 100%. Which is also why when we work with our um, people over at Being Sacral, we we operate through a trauma informed lens. <laughs> like, it's very important to Teresa and I. Because, yeah, which is even like mm. not something that like even human design will say like, well, trauma is like not even a word that exists in human design or like healing is seven centered or whatever. And that is something that I don't agree with. Mm-mm. I I have my own perspective of the process. Mm-hmm. So, you know, yeah, I've heard it talked about. <laughs> you don't feel safe in your body. You're not going to be able to listen to your authority or trust your authority or trust your body as it's moved. Trust the vehicle. You're going to be like freaking out passenger freaking out passengers not even the passenger at that point it's the driver trying to be the vehicle like it's yeah it's all it's all messed up um so genetic yoga why did the chicken cross the road why did the chicken cross the road dying to know (laughs) it was responding to something across the street That's what it would be for us. Still want to know what the design of mushrooms are, y'all. Still <laughs> want to know what the design of mushrooms are. Yeah, why was that not a thing? Because there's some secret there, probably. Right? Maybe the maybe the mushrooms doesn't. are the voice. And they're like, we can't give away our secret. <laughs> Open head shit. Open head shit. Oh, no choice. <laughs> The answer to why did the, Chris, the, the chicken cross the road is no choice. Oh, of course. That's great. I love it. I love that's, it. That's perfect. <clears throat> Was the chicken a projector, Sammy says. <laughs> um, somebody mentioned, I know 2027, you're going to see me thrive for the other. Oh, oh speaking of 2027. Uh, well, let's plug our network. That- I don't think that they've done it yet, but Kiara and Jen, Joyful Projector and Age Ministry. Age they Ministry. Have <laughs> ministry. <laughs> ministry. <A Jedi> story. <laughs> Age, why did I? I just read it. <laughs> Everybody reads it that way. <laughs> oh, Kiara. I knew, I knew it was a Gemini story, and I don't know why I just, I literally read it across the screen. <laughs> I'm it's funny because it. Age Ministry, what does that even mean? <laughs> we all think that's <laughs> move the dash after a please no mm-hmm. i'm just kidding um <laughs> joyful projector and a gemini story aka age ministry <laughs> are going to be <laughs> doing a 2027 um doing a 2027 conversation um you can head over to one of their link in bios and sign up for it uh two projectors just totally receptive loving, projectors oh, two receptive projectors totally all about life cycles all about global cycles i mean they are just they're on it they're amazing both of them <clears throat> yeah it might be nice to have the respect the receptive perspective Receptive perspective. She says, I'm an enigma. Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. I mean, it's a, your name is a conversation starter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Are there any other questions? Uh, Ra's joke was, what was the difference between a man and a dog? An Ajna center? (laughs) (laughs) Don't dogs not have Ajnas? (laughs) I don't know. I'll have to wait. I'll have to see. Who else in our network is doing stuff? Who else is doing stuff? If you're doing stuff, drop in the comments and we'll give it a shout out. Um... See, Brayton has emotional immersion. I think he has a receptive immersion and a projector immersion. Mm-hmm. Um, Sammy's taking sessions, everybody. Yeah. The person that's been cracking you up in the comments is also an, an incredible guide. Yeah. Quad right, splenic projector, channel judgment. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> That's the channel of judgment. Sammy just is a frequency wizard. Um, and that's all I can say is that I don't want to talk her up too much or too little, but she's just, there's not many people I know that are frequency wizards. So, <laughs> uh, the answer to the joke was a man is not a dog. <laughs> Usually didn't get much of a laugh because <laughs> raw was hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> I was taking it way too literally. <laughs> I was like looking at charts in my head. Like, <laughs> Asha. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, also us. We can plug ourselves. We can plug ourselves. <laughs> uh, we don't think about ourselves, but we do. Um, we have over at Being Sacral, we are starting a generator intensive. Um, and our wait list is up in the bio. So if you are a sacral being, whether you're emotional or sacral, head on over there and sign up for the wait list. Um, we will be doing two versions of this intensive, one for sacral authority and one for emotional authority. Um, very different flavors. We want to make sure that um, there's space and for all, for all of the beings. And there's just a different frequency between emotional authority and sacral authority. So we want to honor that as well. Yeah. And we just can, should we tell them about our fun bonuses? No, we got to no. get out, to, give it out to the wait list first. Wow. I'm so I excited know, I just, though. Okay. Well, we have I some know, fun there's... bonuses. We roped some people in from our network to help us out with some things. Mm -hmm. I'll say that. And because, you mm -hmm. know, Brandy and I, mm -hmm. we're not good at everything, mm -hmm. nor do we have a response mm -hmm. for everything, but we know some mm -hmm. people in our network that do. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. collaboration mm -hmm. nation. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy's like, Kira, let's have a projector in terms of the same day to rival. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. And then we could all have a party yeah. together to celebrate after. My defined ego is like, I dare you. My defined ego is like, I dare you to rival me. <laughs> 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 I can feel that just like <laughs> I dare you a frequency could, wizard like... class oh yeah because you're both frequency wizards we got two frequency wizards on here oh that would be... man that'd be dope just saying uh, here's your cordial invitation to host a frequency wizard class yep oh, sure everybody would dig that yeah Oh man, what I would like to, I'd like to be a fly on the wall in that class. Projector frequency wizard class. Mm. I don't know. I don't really know that I want to know what projectors actually think of us though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Those fucking generators just tuned into their sacral. They have such blinders on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know you love us. We have the life for us. <laughs> what I just saw was like Sammy and Kiara doing a class and both of them getting off and being like, Do you know anything that you just said? And they're both like, No, I have no idea. It just came out. <laughs> <laughs> no, Their receptivity no just, whoa, no clue what we just said. <laughs> Man, that, yeah, that would be a good one. Magic of wizardry. Yeah, it would be. It would be really good. Mm -hmm. And then Magical somebody's saying, I would have to attend a Frequency Wizard class. See? See? Give the people what they want. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. Kira, Kira says, yeah, we would black out. We'd black out <laughs> together for the whole class. <laughs> <laughs> just go into, like, inner vision world. Two quad rights just whomp. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That lights me up. Yeah, that's cool. <clears throat> all right well i feel complete do you yeah i feel complete <sighs> thank you <sighs> everybody for side. <laughs> joining us for our season two opener of human design coffee talk um we'll see you next sure week to check us out on spotify apple Podcasts. um we have it up on youtube now so you will get to listen to it on all the different platforms since Sometimes Instagram, you have to keep the camera, you have to keep it open all the time. So if you just yeah. want to pop. We're just trying to make it more convenient. In. The audio is not going to be perfect. I'm working with Dave to like try to make it better, but my perfectionism mind has to be okay with the audio not being perfect. 
Um, also, we're going to be jumping on and doing random, we're going we're gonna to call them shots of espresso. Double <laughs> shots. Double, Double shots. shots. Um, that will probably just be Brandy and I, and then we'll just have random people come on very in the moment that want to come on. Nothing planned, whatever. Um, because that was kind of like how Human Design Coffee Talk got started, was her and I just having these existential conversations and then being like, everybody else might want to listen to this and mm -hmm. it'd be fun if random people came on with us. Um, yeah. So we also have thought about doing like live little coaching sessions with people like, Hey, what's mm -hmm. something that's going on with you right now that mm -hmm. we might be able to assist you with. And yeah, we're just going to see, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Potent. The double shots will be more potent. Come share your, you know, if you ever want to hop on with us, you don't have to be anything in a human design community. Just be a person, at least. <laughs> That's the minimum requirement is to be a human. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And come on and share about your experience in a no judgment zone where nobody is going to be like, "That's not the right way to do it." Fuck that. So we don't mm -hmm. allow that here. <clears throat> All right. Well, All this right, will my be friends. posted. Thank you very much. See Bye. you later. Bye.